Hey guys, what's going on? This is Wayne with Trey County Locksmith Service, and today we're going to be talking about how to choose a power inverter and set it up so you can run everything that you need to run. Now, number one, if you're going to set up a power inverter over 1500 watts, right at or over, plan on installing an external battery source, meaning that you need to have a separate battery from the vehicle somewhere mounted close next to the power inverter to absorb the shock. If you're not planning on doing that, then you're not gonna get the full maximum potential out of your power inverter. I see a ton of comments out there, oh, I have a 2000 watt power inverter or a 3000 watt power inverter, and it's just not running my stuff the way that I want it to. That's because you don't have it installed properly. Either take it to a professional to have them install it with the proper wire and an external battery source. Uh, separate from the vehicle. Now the way I have mine set up is I have a wire that comes from the um, battery. Uh, it Right at the connection it then has three fuses. Um, I think I've got 60 amp fuses in them right now and that's going to be more than they'll ever use. That wire trickle powers everything and brings to the power to charge the battery. My secondary batteries, I have two 70 amp hour batteries. That is because I want to be able to run stuff for a long time without having to turn the van on. Everything that I'm going to run today is going to be with the van off. I can sit back here and I can cut 100 keys on my key machine and go right back there and start the van up like nothing ever happened. So to check that out and take a look at it here, I'm going to shut this door. <clears throat> you can see we've got our Traveler 1500 watt power inverter right here. Okay. Most important part of this setup is the O gauge wire back here. Take a look at how thick that is. Okay. O gauge wire on the input side. That's even thicker than it came with, but I wanna make sure that I have all the power that I need to coming in on the inside. We use the stock wire. I think it's like one or two gauge going out and that's the main thing. You want free flow of power. You need big monster cables as short of a distance as possible to your battery source. Now here's my battery source down here. We've got twin 70 amp hour batteries, okay? So that's gonna keep me running all day long. <clears throat> well, maybe not all day, but like I said, I can cut 100 keys easily. Uh, let's talk about batteries for a second. A sealed battery is going to be your best choice. They're very, very expensive though. You can get like a 200 and, or like 140 or 200 amp hour battery, but they're, you know, two, three, four hundred dollars for a battery like that that's completely sealed. These batteries are partially sealed. You notice the tubes on them. The tubes on them actually run out and they expel the hydrogen gas. When you charge a battery, it expels gas unless it's a sealed battery. You need to keep that in mind if you're gonna have external batteries inside your vehicle. You wanna make sure that you get that hydrogen gas out of there because it's explosive. You don't wanna do that. Uh, some of the other safety points are um, putting the fuses in. That way, if any of the wires that you run rub, uh, it'll cut and it won't melt everything down. Uh, and use the appropriate gauge cable that you need to run. I always go above and beyond. If I'm running something, I'm running O gauge cable, as maximum, as thick as I can possibly get it, because uh, you want all the power that you can get. You don't want any restrictive points. Um, but once again, keeping it as short as possible, external battery source, I can run anything I want to with this 1500 watt power inverter. Samsung printer, we just printed stuff off um, just before we started here. Uh, this was my old power inverter, um, 800 watts, and I can run a key machine. I could run just about anything I wanted to on this all day long, and it's just a tiny little power inverter. Uh, I wanted to jump up to something a little bit bigger, um, and I'll show you what we got here too. Uh, the other thing, I will be putting this isolator in line here. Uh, this basically on your power cable that's coming into uh, your your system. Uh, the charging cable from the main battery on the vehicle, uh, you run it into here and then uh, run out. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna let power come in, but not power go out. So if you kill your batteries back here, your van will still start. Um, not required, but uh, <clears throat> could be a good idea. So, isolator, um, 
Right now I'm powering LED lights. I'm charging two batteries right here, Milwaukee batteries. And uh, we can grab a DeWalt angle grinder. Notice the light doesn't even flicker. That's important. If you start to turn stuff on and you get a light flickering, that's a bad deal. Uh, I got a small Craftsman two and a half horsepower air compressor under here. That thing's already full. I just charged it up today. It ran it fine, no problem. Um, heat gun, big, heavy duty, high, high power drawing, 1500 watts. This is a good test, 1500 watts. Most people, this is the best test you can do, is if you have a 1500 watt heat gun, plug it into your power inverter and see if you're getting the maximum power. This is starting to make the light flicker a little bit. This is pushing the limits. But we could probably turn all that stuff off and just plug this in directly and be just fine all by itself. So you can see the kind of tools that you can run. And the key machine starts up no problem. Got our HPC right here. No problem at all. Notice you don't even hear a beep or an overload or anything. You can turn it off and then turn it back on from a dead stop doesn't even flicker the lights so this is what I'm talking about when I'm saying you need to set it up properly and have a professional install it I got quoted like a hundred bucks to go ahead and and uh, have this installed professionally I kind of like to do things myself so really to be perfectly honest um, if I had it to do over again I probably would have just paid somebody because it probably took about three hours to set all this up uh, whereas I could have made that back um, working as opposed to doing it and paid them and still made more money. But whatever, I'm a do-it-myself type of person and um, this is just one of those things that we did ourselves. So if you want to set up your power inverter properly, seek out your professional, make sure they run the, the proper size cable and plan on running an external battery. It doesn't even have to be as big as one of these. You can get a small amp hour battery that'll tuck in anywhere and you don't have to worry about any gases or anything like that and it will literally double your capacity that you're used to if you're running a single line from the main battery all the way back here and then putting your wiring in you're you're cutting your capacity in half so for more information check out the website below check out waynesluckshop.com and thanks for watching have a great day hey guys it's the end of the video um, you know, help me out and help me help you out. Uh, right below the description box right here is a red subscribe button. Subscribe to me and then you're going to get the latest and greatest information that I put out. Sometimes it applies to you, sometimes it doesn't. Um, you know, it, it's just going to at least let you know that uh, we're putting out new and current information. And then right over here is a thumbs up button. Give me a thumbs up. Help this video uh, rank higher in the searches for the search terms that you're using and let other people be able to see this. Um, you know, that's the best way you can help. Interact. Leave a comment. I will get back with you if I can and try and help you answer your questions. But the more you interact and post this to Facebook, Twitter, Google+, and spread this through the social media, uh, the more that allows me to be able to help do more videos. So thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And uh, subscribe share and like. Thanks a lot guys. Appreciate it.